Leviticus 9. Now that we've anointed Aaron and his sons as priests, they can finally start their ministry. So get ready for some primitive Christian rock, I guess. Actually, if you recall, God told the new priests they had to wait at the entrance of the tent of meeting for a full week, day and night. The week is now over, and I assume the first thing they have to do is pee. But no, the Bible doesn't go there. Instead, we find out that God is still fixated on torturing innocent animals. On the eighth day, Moses summoned Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. He said to Aaron, Take a bull calf for your sin offering and a ram for your burnt offering, both without defect, and present them before the Lord. Then say to the Israelites, Take a male goat for a sin offering, a calf and a lamb, both a year old and without defect, for a burnt offering, and an ox and a ram for a fellowship offering to sacrifice before the Lord, together with a grain offering mixed with olive oil. For today, the Lord will appear to you. Did you hear that detail? Don't just take animals to kill, take perfect baby animals. As if they are juicier or something. In case you are keeping track, and I know you are, that's a bull calf and a male goat for sin offerings, a ram, a baby calf, and a baby lamb for burnt offerings, and an ox and a ram for a fellowship offering, and bread for the hell of it. And if you don't do all of that, God wants nothing to do with you. Good thing we have consecrated priests now to do the murders. They took the things Moses commanded to the front of the tent of meeting, and the entire assembly came near and stood before the Lord. Then Moses said, This is what the Lord has commanded you to do, so that the glory of the Lord may appear to you. We know. Jesus, we know. We weren't listening for fun. We listened because we had to. Moses said to Aaron, Come to the altar and sacrifice your sin offering and your burnt offering, and make atonement for yourself and the people. Sacrifice the offering that is for the people, and make atonement for them as the Lord has commanded. Torture the animals, is what he's saying. J just say that. Don't try to hide it. So Aaron came to the altar and slaughtered the calf as a sin offering for himself. His sons brought the blood to him, and he dipped his finger into the blood and put it on the horns of the altar. The rest of the blood he poured out at the base of the altar. On the altar he burned the fat the kidneys, and the long lobe of the liver from the sin offering, as the Lord commanded Moses. The flesh and the hide he burned up outside the camp. Then he slaughtered the burnt offering. His sons handed him the blood, and he splashed it against the sides of the altar. They handed him the burnt offering piece by piece, including the head, and he burned them on the altar. He washed the internal organs and the legs and burned them on top of the burnt offering on the altar. It is amazing how much time we have spent murdering cows. In great detail, no less. You know, for people so addicted to graphic torture scenes, you would think Christians would be less prudish about sex. They should all totally be into BDSM. I mean, it was such a missed opportunity right there. And how did his sons bring the blood to him? Are they bringing flesh and letting the blood drip? Are they collecting it in a bowl? It's like the worst survivor challenge ever. Anyway, we're not done being evil. Aaron then brought the offering that was for the people. He took the goat for the people's sin offering and slaughtered it, and offered it for a sin offering as he did with the first one. He brought the burnt offering, and offered it in the prescribed way. He also brought the grain offering, took a handful of it, and burned it on the altar in addition to the morning's burnt offering. Glad they just squeezed the grain in there, just to break up the monotony of animal sacrifice. Speaking of which, he slaughtered the ox and the ram as the fellowship offering for the people. His sons handed him the blood, and he splashed it against the sides of the altar. But the fat portions of the ox and the ram, the fat tail, the layer of fat, the kidneys, and the long lobe of the liver, these they laid on the breasts. And then Aaron burned the fat on the altar. Aaron waved the breasts and the right thigh before the Lord as a wave offering, as Moses commanded. 
Oh, good. Back to waving the breasts. Honestly, I thought that would be more enjoyable, but it is just thrown into the middle of a giant gory death scene. So I am just not feeling it. Then Aaron lifted his hands toward the people and blessed them. And having sacrificed the sin offering, the burnt offering, and the fellowship offering, he stepped down. He better have done that at a distance since his entire body must be covered in animal flesh. Moses and Aaron then went into the tent of meeting. When they came out, they blessed the people, and the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. Fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the fat portions on the altar. And when all the people saw it, they shouted for joy and fell face down. God just binged all that food like Joey Chestnut on July 4th. And then fire came out of him! like a dragon. But for once in the Bible, this fire seems nice. No one's getting sacrificed. God just wants his food warmer or something. Why is everyone else excited about God's meal? They've got to be hungry. They probably fell face down because they fainted from exhaustion. I was hoping that when we finally returned to the story, it would be somewhat more exciting than repeated descriptions of how to murder Bambi's family. Oops.